praise the Lord. Um, this is Tom Lorick, pastor of the Father's House, and we have Brother Steve Grease, who um, has been a part of the Father's House for, for several years before he moved on out here. We're in, a, we're in a southern city of Illinois, and this is a testimony to show where God could bring someone from and where he, he could bring someone to and beyond someone from any situation in life who decides to, to seek God and we're talking about someone who decides that Jesus is the way to follow so in um, this I want to ask uh Brother Steve, to go back to when you found yourself in Chicago, and just briefly tell us your the state of your living conditions, whatever you want to touch on briefly, maybe you know how you ended up there in a brief, you know, very brief uh, saying, whatever you want to reveal about that, but tell us what happened and and what what condition did you find yourself in Chicago? Uh, and, and how many years ago was that? Uh, uh, I came to Chicago very uh, uh, beginning of 08. I applied to UTI College for Diesel Industrial and I had already submitted my fee and everything, but when I got there, I was unable to get in at that time, like they had told me, nowhere to go, no, no finances mm. for housing, so I ended up on the street. On the streets? Yeah. And how long were you on the streets of Chicago? 11 months. 11 months. So when you say on the streets, you're talking about homeless. Yeah. Where did you used to sleep on the streets? Humble Park on a park bench. On a park bench in Humble Park. <laughs> and I think I remember you telling me in the cold, no matter what condition, you were out there. Rain, sleet, snow, and I'd walk from Humble Park to Salvation and Deliverance Church. You found the church there, which was a church that that my wife and I were a part of for many years and it's a it's a cathedral building so it probably caught your eye you know I yeah. assume as you're walking mm -hmm. and they received you with a warm welcome um, from what I understand the pastor you know um, received you and tell us what were you thinking in your heart toward toward the Lord as you approached the church and you know you found yourself on the streets homeless and um, what were you thinking about as far as now you're approaching this church tell us what began to happen in your heart and mind towards the Lord himself and how your situation began to change well I grew up Catholic mm -hmm. so I'd always go to church you know, yeah. believe in God yeah and that's why when well, I'd just be walking around because mm -hmm. I didn't have nothing being new, never been there yeah. in Chicago before. So I figured, well, Sunday morning I went to church and they welcomed me in, um, attended church service. And after church, back to my park bench. Wow. And they had service three times three times a week so then I'd go on Sunday mornings and then I'd go I'd show up during the week at night time wow. in the snow, in the sleet wow. go to church go to my park bench wow and then they, so you begin to see and I was raised Catholic too and um so that, that foundation 
of Jesus is in Catholic people. You know, they, for the most part, they, they have already accepted that God has a son whose name is Jesus. And so you begin to hear about it maybe in a different way, in a new way. Yeah. This was a full gospel setting. And so in your heart, what, um, what began to open up as far as your understanding towards the Lord, if any, you know, in any new ways? And what was drawing you back to this church? Oh, um, just the different way that the church, you know, being Catholic and just the different ways that the church, mm -hmm. you know, how they did the services and stuff yeah. and talking with the people and everything, it just, I don't know. And, and then, like you mentioned to me yesterday, it was different in that when you're going, um, you know, of course, uh, being raised Catholic, you might go to church, you know, once a week, and the whole church experience might be an hour, you know, the, the church service itself, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> so by the time you leave your home and you're back, it's an hour and a half and you're already home. But you begin to experience people going to church two, three days a week, three, you know, two, three hours at a time. So you saw that now you, you begin... You, your thoughts be, begin to go towards the Lord even more. Yeah. And then it affecting you in your daily uh, decisions of life. Yeah. So then at, at some point, did they offer for you to stay in the church building? Yeah. Uh, it was on a Tuesday, Tuesday evening, and it's like, the senior pastor, Pastor Kurt, he's like told the people in the church that because a lot of them didn't know I was homeless. Oh wow! And I was, they'd see me walk in, I was wet, I was cold. Mm. They didn't know I was literally living on wow. a park bench. Mm. And he's like, he let them know that starting tonight. That they couldn't see me living there on the street. Wow. So they opened the church for me to to stay there with mm -hmm. them. And I would start to stay in upstairs in the church and I would help out mm -hmm. working on the church van on the church bus mm -hmm. and helping out around the church fixing stuff. Yeah, and then come to find out, people discovered you you have a lot of skills in uh, auto mechanic, truck truck mechanic work. You uh, you worked on a farm for many years, and then not only that, you have skills that you could almost literally build a house. <laughs> yeah. So so you you know you had many skills that people begin to discover. And so you be you begin to get very active, helping out the church. And then when when a lot of the the believers and and other people found out that you can do different things, um, I know from from my own experience. And you would be you you were uh, you begin to fix people's cars, you know, do different jobs in their homes. So you saw different ways. Uh, that God was, you know, different opportunities that God was putting before you. Yeah. You know, little by, and it began to increase. And um, at some point now, how how many years were you uh, there, or how long of a time were you actually living there at the Salvation and Deliverance Church? About three years. Three years. And then... My wife and I came in contact with you, and one thing led to another, and then you um, you ended up staying with us in our home, and then you moved from Salvation and Deliverance to to the Father's House Church, and you're with us for probably two or three years. Yeah. And then during that time, you know, I know from personal experience, you know, anything that was broken, you would try to fix it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and and um, you were a great blessing to many people. Um, and one thing about you, um, 
whenever you did a job for someone, and and we say, okay, how much do you want for it? And you would leave it up to the person. You know, you never put a high demand. Well, yeah, this job is, you know, it took so many hours, so I need two hundred fifty dollars. You know, stuff like that. But you were very gracious to God's people, and you did that over and over and over again. And and maybe some people should have gave you some more, but yeah, you know, but. You know, some people could maybe have taken slight, slight advantage of you, you know, but you would just give it over to the Lord. And so, but, but you were a faithful person. And in church, you would, uh, you took it seriously enough to always take the notes of every sermon. Oh, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about that because you were very diligent. You weren't just there to have a place to stay. But you begin to seek the Lord, take it seriously, and uh, even God would give you poems that would fit right in with, with what God was doing at the time. Tell us a little bit about that that personal uh, uh, quest you were on to find more about God Himself and Jesus. Well, I'd always, whatever I do, I always talk with God first. Okay. Because I wouldn't be where I am without God. Yeah. So I take notes, and a lot of times He would give me give me things like I had no clue what you were going to preach on. Yeah. But He would give me a poem mm -hmm. to read. Yeah. And it would have, and not knowing what you were going to preach on so after you I'd read the poem and after you had already gave your sermon mm -hmm. I'd already have yeah. the poem <laughs> and yeah. I'd read it and yeah. everybody would be shocked because I had no idea Yeah. and it had to, always had to do with God gave me mm -hmm. hey, it's like here Here's a poem for me to read. Yeah. And, and it, it was, had to, it was all tied in to yeah. what. And it, some of the amazing things about those poems, you know, Brother Steve is, um, you know, he grew up on the farm, you know, kind of, you know, he's the kind of like to wear a big cowboy hat, cowboy boots, you know blue jeans and, you know, big chains, you know, hanging, you know, on his wallet and stuff like that, you know, kind of a, not, you know, not a real, um, you know, I mean, he's like a, like a real man, you know, rough man, you know, hands on fixing things, but these poems were so intense, you know, talking about the beauty of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord and fit right in. And it, and it was like, wow, that came through brother Steve. And, and they were like a, you know, they were like amazing, so that's a gift, you know, I want to encourage you to keep keep asking God to give you poems, because cause God is using you in that way, and uh, so now, it's been like maybe six years now, six or seven years from the time you were homeless, living on the park benches, uh, you received many prophetic words from different prophets, concerning what God was going to do. Maybe briefly recall some of the promises God began to speak to you. And this is while you were either living in the church or living in our house, you know, in a bedroom. And you even moved into, into our church for a little while. So you, you were just living from place to place. God was providing, you know. That was amazing to get you off the street, and you were grateful but what was what did God begin to speak to you, you know, briefly about your future through the prophets that were that you were coming in contact with? Uh, like I heard from associate pastor that he was seeing me back on a farm, mm -hmm. and yeah. he would describe the buildings. Mm. and uh, the house and stuff like that wow. and I had had pictures of farmsteads and stuff 
back here and on down south and I had showed him some pictures and it was back at my father's house. Wow, look at that. That and it had been what like how many years was it since you had to leave the farm of your, your 2001. Father? So from 2001, okay. So quite a few years had, had gone by and um, different things happened. One thing led to another. You fell into some rough, you know, uh, rough times. And uh, so, you know, you went through a lot, even, you know, experiencing being wrongfully accused by the law and, you know, had some trouble there and then you, you were homeless. And so all these things were going on. But now you begin to get hooked up with God's people and then the prophets begin to see different prophets would prophesy blessings that, that God would show them that was coming your way. And so while maybe some people didn't realize some people didn't see what, you know, but, but God saw what he wanted to do in you. If you took a look back when you were homeless on the bench, a lot of people could have just said, ah, poor guy, but, you know, probably there's no hope for someone like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But God saw. <laughs> yeah. God saw you. And, um, but you took some steps. You had to walk to that church. And, and, and then you begin to go every day. So that was your seeking God. Then you, you begin to hear the sermons. And these were sermons that could last, you know, hour, hour and a half long, you know, in our type of churches. And you begin to take notes and read about it and seek the Lord and begin to pray. And so we know you were grateful, you know, for, for every door God began to open. But now here's like six or seven years later. Uh, and about a year ago, I guess, uh, you know, maybe more, you got a call from your father, which this fulfilled the prophecy. He wanted you to come back home yeah. to pretty much, you know, work on the farm again. And, you know, you, you, you begin you begin to be like the head worker there, right? Yeah. Okay. So that was amazing. So we we joyfully, but... You know, sorrowfully at our part, but <laughs> joyfully had to release you back. <laughs> and um, so you begin to live with your father and get back into farming, which you love to do. You know, you always talked about uh, principles and stuff. You know, what we're doing, you know, we could be uh, doing something at our house or in the church, and you'd say, well, back on the farm, we could do this. <laughs> you know? So it was always in your mind and in your heart, you know. And so now you found yourself back there. Now now it's like a year after you've been back. And tell us where we're sitting in right now. What, where, where are we right now talking? Well, the one prophecy that was one of the first prophecies that I got that I was going to have my own place. Wow. So, and that's where we're sitting in right now. Yes. We're sitting in one of your living rooms because this is just one of the living rooms in your own house. Yes, my own four bedroom house. Four bedroom house. And and we counted uh two and a half baths. Yeah. Um and how long have you lived in this house now? Just not quite a year now. Okay, and this house that you find yourself in, you could say that it was truly by the grace of God working, you know, through the different people that, that you were associated with, you know, your dad and everything, but you didn't have to really struggle to get this house the way norm people normally get a house but what can you say about how you were blessed to obtain this 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 dwelling you're in now <laughs> from the park bench to this four bedroom house <laughs> what can you say like how how 
Um, what can you briefly mention in a general way how, how God just brought you into this? Believing in God. Yeah. Because you didn't have to come up with a down payment, right? No. No down payment. No. And I understand you don't have a mortgage payment, right? No mortgage. I own this house. Title in hand. Title in hand, and this is your place. Yeah. And your mind, what you weren't obsessed with the idea that man, I gotta have a house, I gotta have this, I gotta have that. But you were, you, your mind was geared towards finding out more about Jesus and and and, and, and getting closer to God. And so while you're doing that, God was setting you up. Beyond what you could imagine, yeah. you could say, right? Yeah. And so here we are with, with Brother Steve, seven years later, from the park bench in Humble Park in Chicago to a beautiful town here in uh, Sp uh, Spiraland, Illinois. Beautiful hillsides here, you know, like the streets are on nice hills and everything. Uh, why don't you just take a, just a brief walk through so we can see the kitchen and just just briefly so that people could see some of this house. So this is the living room. And this is the living room. And, and then upstairs is the bathroom and two bedrooms. Which we slept in, my wife and I slept in one of the bedrooms, very nice walk-in closets. <laughs> <laughs> the closets are like five times bigger than our closets in our house. And then here's um, another bathroom. Bathroom and laundry room. This is like the dining area here. Show the, show the kitchen real fast, just briefly. Beautiful kitchen area. And a whole other living room. This room, you haven't even begun to decorate over here. This is like a huge blessing. Four bedrooms. And we are believers, you know, and, and you and me often talk about this. We're not the type of believers to get excited about, oh, you know, you know, obtaining possessions, cars, houses, and stuff. So we talk about that often. But when this is a fulfillment of the scripture, what Jesus said. Don't worry about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, all these things. These things the Gentiles seek after. See, many people are seeking after money, seeking after possessions. You were seeking Jesus. Yeah. And God hooked you up in an amazing way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. And God set you up with this four-bedroom house, and, and you're single. Yeah. But, but I understand God has some promises, so... I believe this is only just the beginning of yeah. what God's about to do. And we're believing God to, to make this house, not for a single man, but for a good family man. <laughs> In Amen. Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Congratulations on what God is doing. And thank Okay. So, God bless you all for watching. And we pray that you are blessed by Brother Steve's testimony. And... This shows how someone can seek the Lord and just do good and be an honest person and just want to help other people in the blessing that God gives his people that, that put him first. So thank you, Brother Steve, and God bless you all. God bless you.